welcome to another Coffee with Kilroy, or what I like to call beverage in a book. My beverage, coffee. Uh, your beverage, well, that is up to you. The book today is The Fields of Normandy 2, a solitaire war game from Mike Lambeau. That name may sound familiar because Mr. Lambeau has been very, very busy and pr produced a lot of game books and war game books and all kinds of fun stuff over the last year or so. I think we're getting into year two of his prolific uh, designs and he has covered a lot of topics, including... The Fields of Normandy, um, in which I believe this was his first design. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I think he sent me this. Uh, I bought most of his games or his war game books. But uh, this one I think he sent to me. And guess what? This one uh, he sent to me. This is just coming out now. It's uh, available on Amazon, uh, where I've gotten all, most of my uh, war game books of his. And uh, so, you know, wanted to, uh, I reached out to him and said, hey, this looks interesting. I, I, I liked your other designs and uh, thanked him for this. And now this video is a thank you for this. Um, he had some modest requests too, as I do this review, so I'm going to try to respect those as well. But this is kind of an update to Fields of Normandy. I think this is a new game. It's got new maps and a new way to play. Uh, but but bases it on a lot of the same stuff that's in, already uh, familiar in Fields of Normandy. And I'll go through that in a little bit more detail of, of what some of the differences uh, may be. On the back of the book here, we have The Fields of Normandy 2. The sequel to The Fields of Normandy is set in Normandy. Imagine that. France, uh, Normandy, France, in 1944 and reflects loosely the conditions and situations faced by the U.S., 8th Corps of the United States Army as it pushed inland as part of Operation Cobra. The fighting was intense and incredibly violent. German units were very well dug in and protected by artillery and mines. In the game, you will be controlling small groups of soldiers from a platoon consisting of three rifle squads, a machine gun team, a bazooka team, and a mortar team. As the platoon lieutenant, it is your job to command three squad, these squads and teams in order to clear the German defensive positions. The Field of Normandy 2 is an accessible, portable, solitaire, hex encounter style war game in a book. And a couple things I want to point out here. Number one, uh, his last sentence there is, is highly accurate. This is a war game in a book. Uh, Mike Lambeau's designs are a, a little bit different than some of the other uh, game books that you might see there on the market, which you know, might be Choose Your Own Adventure books or, uh, or like Minden, where you have to like make all your components. These games can be played in the book, but over time, people and a lot of his fans of his uh, work have made their own uh, their own supplements. Meaning that they've they've either they've I've seen people spiral bound these, and so that you can easily flip to the maps. I've seen people you know take the maps out completely and you know laminate them or mount them or what have you. A lot of people make their own counters for these games. I mean, these his original designs were kind of designed to be kind of a write in the book type design. Um, that, uh, but the, you know, for people like me who I don't destroy anything, I can't even play like a legacy game because of that. Um, that uh, those people had some difficulty with that, either having to put. Uh, um, plexiglass over it or make copies or put trace sheet or whatever. They a lot of different ways to try to preserve what, what is in the book. But everything you need is in the book. You have a map on one side and you usually have a bunch of AI charts or uh, the, the orders that are for the uh, other side. It'll give you your choice of what you can do, but also what the AI is going to do, uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, it's all on, on right in front of you and you can play it that way. Um, so these are a war game in a book, and, and they, they tend to be more hex encounter. He has some track type games as well, but uh, a lot of his games are, are really pure hex encounter games that you would find in a box version, except that they are in a very portable book. The other thing I want to talk about here is, is that you know, these are um, 
uh, groups of platoon consisting of three rifle squads, machine gun team, bazooka team, mortar team. This is small unit tactical, you know, something that uh, near and dear to my heart. I've covered quite a bit and actually have an article on that. I'll, I'll uh, post that in the description of this as well, as well as um, I guess I'll, I'll put a link to all my Lambo coverings uh, to date uh, in the description as well. But um, Small Unit Tactical, I wrote an article or Geek List on um, Port Game Geek that actually uh, uh, got a Charlie that really talked about the evolution of Small Unit Tactical games back from its earliest days all the way up through, you know, Squad Leader up to today, you know, and, and this, this would fall in there. And, and Small Unit Tactical is basically platoon level down. So platoons, uh, squads, uh, teams, and individuals. So, you know, from, from the, the, the very in close up close and personal type look at uh, tactical games. So, um, so there you have it. Let's let's look into this book. Let me get some coffee. And as you can see here, there are some counters right on the on the cover page. So uh, his earlier works, you know, didn't have uh, counters <clears throat> in there. You you just had this, and you can mark on on these. These were designed to to mark in the book, right? Uh, and then, of course, you had to go buy a new one, and and he was happy to send you sell you a new one. So, but but people over time, uh, the the fans uh, and actually Mike Lambo himself started offering up counters and, and the like that people could use. And people use these counters. They sometimes people make up their own. Sometimes they use minis um, that you know get them from you know Axis and Allies or whatever you. And you can you know use minis on the board or. I've seen people even use like blocks, you know, go, go, go all Euro on it. So anyway, let's take a quick look inside the book here. You've got all the other books that he has done, which I think I have every single one of them. Uh, you've got an introduction, which is very standard, the background, how to use this book, a note for fields of Normandy veterans. That That's something I might cover a little bit more this time as opposed to going through each, everything in detail that I normally do. Here's all your rules. Uh, and then you've got your different missions. It looks like there's 12 different missions here, and then you've got a campaign record sheet. So, the, so not only can you play these individually, but I imagine you can play these in some kind of order and create a campaign as well. Then here's the, those suggested counters that uh, you can use with the game if you want to uh, have a more tactile feel to your gameplay. Then we have uh, the introduction, how this book works. So let's let's look here and go over this. A note to uh, for Fields of Normandy veterans. If you've played Fields of Normandy, then you've already be familiar with many of the rules of Fields of Norm Normandy 2. However, there are some material differences to look out for. These are summarized here for ease of reference. New players should probably skip this section as it's not meant to be part of the rules and makes little sense as it is. So this is, if, you're, if you've played a lot of this, uh, Fields of Normandy, the original version, uh, and you just want to, you know, based on what you know here, want to get into this, this might be a nice little quick section to look at to tell you what is different uh, in this game, and then you can kind of pick up where you left off. Um, so it look, talks here, U.S. units uh, do not uh, have to perform the first order, and then the second order, U.S. units can move in any direction. The basic attack statistics for U.S. have been changed to make it harder to hit German units. And he's got little explanations for this. I just want to kind of hit the highlights here. All German forces appear when found or scouted. The German unit chart now includes an all-clear option. Fields of Normandy 2 includes two new terrain features, water hexes and bocage. U.S. machine gun units and bazooka teams can now move and fire, but with a penalty of plus one to their to hit. U.S. rifle squads can now call in artillery and assault German units. Grenade attacks can now destroy half tracks and can and as can the new artillery order. The facing of German unit can change when it is fired upon. Mortars can now fire defensive smoke. German artillery operate a little differently. Uh, scouted German units can now be placed facing off the map. A German Panzer IV tank may, might appear. Well, that's nice to know. Uh, German snipers can now disrupt even the best tactical plans. So there's a little bit more detail in here, but those, that's the general changes uh, between Fields of Normandy 1, this book, and Fields of Normandy 2. 
Uh, then you're going to have the rules, mission setup. You've got your terrain chart, your terrain, your turn tracker, your turn process. And again, there's there's activations, right? And these are, you know, what you pick for your activations. And then you're going to have the AI uh, have its as well. The, you know, here's the German activation. That's the AI in this case. The U.S. orders, you've got move, fire, grenade attack, take cover, rally scout. You've got, you know, here's your hexes. This is dealing with some examples of, of some of those orders. You've got smoke, artillery, assault, uh, morale. Uh, here's how to reveal units. And uh, flanking and support and more stuff on U.S. units down here. Or this is talks about the number of units and their to hit and some notes on them. So everything is in here. So any you know any small unit tactical game that you would uh, expect to uh, play is um, a lot of the rules of that are in here. But yet this is not as complex. This I you know this is not as complex as squad leader and, and heaven forbid uh, van squad leader or games of that ilk. This is definitely more accessible and easier to play right out of the book. You've got a campaign. Here's the campaign rules. And so if you're looking at a little bit more longer term play, this has a whole campaign system in it. And then you go into each of the missions. And so what you're going to have here, you're going to have on the missions, you're going to have uh, the U.S. Army card or chart, which tells you the, the specifics of the, that army, like the number that you hit, uh, notes. And then you're going to have the, um, the activations. And then the German uh, activations, and then you're going to have you know special conditions for the terrain depending on what's on the map. And then you're going to have a map over here. And I will say that over time, the the maps have have gotten better. Uh, you know, his charts have gotten a little bit better. Like here, here's the charts in in uh, uh, the the uh, fields of Normandy one. And here's the charts now. You have a lot more color. You have a lot more emphasis. You have a lot more detail. Uh, you got a, a lot more going on and a lot more uh, explanation here. And then over here, here's the maps. They're very simple, but they were also meant to be, you know, usually written on and and the like at, in the early stages. Now you have something that looks like a, you know, a war game map, you know, a regular hex encounter war game type map. The train's looking uh, more detailed. You're you're seeing even some elevation here. Um, and, uh, and it just looks to me at least, uh, better, uh, and more presentable. That's just, that's my opinion. You know, your opinion may vary. We all have opinions. Um, we, uh, we also have something else too, but anyway, so, um, so, you know, this has been an improvement over time, but basically that's what these books have. They usually have this kind of setup where you have everything you need to know to play the game over here. And then you have the playing surface over here. And then if you want to make your own counters, you can make your own counters. And there's going to be several of these missions. As I said, there's like 12 of these missions in here. Uh, I'm not going to go through every one of those. Uh, I think he wants you to see that for yourself and find out for yourself. No spoilers here. So uh, kind of go over that a little bit quickly there. But you can see there's a lot in here. And, and, and the detail gets even better. Here's your campaign record sheet. We saw a glimpse of that earlier on. So you've got a campaign game now. So not only do you have 12 individual scenarios, but you can start tying these together and, and kind of have a, uh, have a campaign game and, and make this, you know, in, in some respects, maybe a little bit more RPG-ish, you know, role-playing game-ish where you're, you're tracking your, your units throughout this whole campaign. And here's the suggested counters. Um, and you can, again, people make their own, people use minis, people use blocks, uh, people use coins, people use whatever the heck they want. Or you can just write in the book, right? Um, but here is the uh, suggested counters uh, for uh, the game. And I think those are some of the same counters that we saw on the front cover. Yeah, those are some of the same counters. And it's a top-down top view, heavy machine gun rifles, uh, and uh, it's a half-track there. Yeah, these are half-tracks, I imagine. And then there's a panzer there. So there you have it. Uh, the rest of this is blank. And that is Fields of Normandy 2, which is the follow-up to the first in this series, Fields of Normandy 1. Now it's 1. You know, you, you never call it number 1. You know, Rocky wasn't called Rocky 1 until Rocky 2 came out. So you got Fields of Normandy 
uh, and Fields of Normandy 2. And if that doesn't, you know, tickle your fancy, you've got a whole bunch of other stuff from Mr. Lambeau. But this is looking good. If, if you liked Fields of Normandy, then this is a no-brainer. This looks better. It looks like there's more detail. There's more uh, decisions. There's more stuff going on. And the graphic presentation has gotten better over time as well. At least that's my opinion. So anyway, that's what I have for you today on Coffee with Kilroy. Want to thank um, Mike Lambeau again for uh, for both of these books. I believe I got this one from him, uh, but definitely got this one from him. And uh, love to know what you think about this. Uh, I've covered a lot of war game books. This has been somewhat of a of a boon over the last year and a half, uh, and really came back into play. Uh, there's always there's been war game books since the 70s, maybe even earlier, but uh, they really have kind of come into their own as a niche of this uh, of war gaming hobby. So. Love to know what you think about this one, uh, what you think about um, any of his books, uh, or anything that's on your mind. Uh, I just, I'm just i just happy you stopped by and had some coffee with me. And the best way I know you stopped by is drop me a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Uh, and if you want to get into a debate or argument, that's fine too. Just keep it civil. Anyway, uh, thanks again. Have a good one. Enjoy the rest of your coffee. <laughs> Thanks for watching.